Morning everybody and welcome to Sunday Q&A brought to you from the festive winter wonderland. <laughs> yeah, we've done it all up. Um, yeah, the big, we got it all up, got it up last week. The biggest problem is getting the lights around the beams, but I've worked it all out now. You use the outside ladder, which my father-in-law gave me because he used to be a roofer, um, rather than the wooden one, which is over there. Wooden ladder there which I actually acquired when I did a clearance job in Commercial Street of an aquarium. That was fun. Um, and of course, no Christmas tree as usual. The Christmas cactus has died, which used to be in the corner. Um, but we've decided not to get Christmas trees because my wife feels bad about the fact that they have to cut down a tree to do it, which seems a bit unnecessary, particularly when you're inundated with plants. So instead, we've got Christmas Steve. Over there in the corner, the wooden man. You see all the lights in the corner over there? Yeah, that's the wooden man. So. Anyway, all done, all ready to go. One week left to go. I think it might drop off a bit, guys, now. The amount of people that I go into say, when are you closing? And, uh, well, a few, 23rd, a lot of them, 23rd. I go, what, all day? No, 12 o'clock. So I think we can take it as read that um, by Friday afternoon, a lot of places will be shut. So be careful. If you pick a job up on Friday morning that's got to go somewhere on Friday afternoon, make sure when you get there, it's going to be open, otherwise you can find it stuck on board and then it'll be like, well, can you do re-delivery? Well, I'm going to have to, won't I? Will they reopen again on the 29th or 28th? Yeah, I wasn't planning on going back to work in between. Yeah, but you've got the goods now. You've got to take them back. It's like, oh. So I would be wise on that one. I personally am going to get what I can out of next week. Um, I had a very good week this week. I'd sort of hammered it out this week. Um, and so, I'm, yeah, I'm going to get what I can Try not to get jobs going great distance in case something happens to the truck and has to be recovered. Not that it should, but you know, it's Murphy's Law. If it's going to go wrong, it's going to go wrong, like you know. And I'm looking for, you know, I still want to crack away at the beginning of the week, but not at the end of the week. Hang on, we're going to take the jump prompts off. Right, anyway, we're going to start today with um, a complaint. <laughs> This is from the best debate. Right, I'll just read it to you. This is from CW Logistics. He says, Hi, Pete. Going to be honest and say you have annoyed me this week, and I have a few questions around that. Last night, I went round your house to ask you a question. You were very nice and invited me in for dinner. I have to say I was very surprised by your dining room as it was long and narrow and nothing like the home you show us in the videos. I'm annoyed because... After asking me for dinner, you then proceeded to put plastic wrap over all the floor and the furniture so that I don't make a mess. Although my wife and I agree with you. <laughs> although, although my wife may agree with you. My questions are, one, what was for dinner as I woke up before eating it? Two, what was my question as I can't for the life of remember it? And thirdly, what the hell are you doing in my dreams? <laughs> Has it come to this now? Oh my. Okay, I would appreciate it if you could stick to keeping yourself in just a YouTube. I am too scared to go to sleep now. Aside from that, I hope you have a great Christmas and best of luck to everyone out there in the new year. It may be a tough start. Cheers, Darren at CW Logistics. Thanks, Darren. Well, you know it's like the blue jumper on, not the green and red jumper with the stripes on with the big funny... Um, so, you, so you're quite safe in your dreams, mate. You, you, you can go back to sleep. That's absolutely fine. As for... What was your question? I imagine it was probably how much can you make on the exchange or should you get, what, should I get a Luton or a long wheelbase? Um, and um, as for the plastic wrapping, well, that just sounds a bit American psycho, doesn't it, really? So, but like I say, I haven't got the stripey jumper on, so you can go back to sleep. It's fine. So, <laughs> it didn't make me smile, though. Right, so this week's video is all about why they don't put the full postcode on. Why, when you see jobs come in, they all say from like AL10 to SG4. After a while, you get to know what they are. AL10, that would be Booker's. SG4, uh, well, no, that one I wouldn't know, but that would just, or if it was MK17, White Trows, or, or um, it's going to be White Trows, or Lewis's, or Amazon. It might be Hermes. Oh, it's not too bad. Cause you, but, and sometimes you're pleasantly surprised. You see the job come through and you've quoted it thinking that's going to be a long wait. And you go, oh, it's not. Oh, look, it's a building site. It does happen. But, so why don't they put in the full postcode? Why don't they put in more information? Van on the run says, ah, oh, because the guy turned around and said about the front of the firm that might be linked to Stobards. Speedy Freight uh, are not linked to any Stobard anymore. They sold it just before Stobards bought out Kalinga. 
Um, they don't type in the job details like addresses. It's all imported into the info from their own IT system. I know this as they have had issues when they switched their new system earlier this year. It causes, it causes issues on the job I was, I was on and I explained that I was going on. Uh, there are some other shippers who post on the same way, so as not to so as not to use the same IT system. I can't remember who. So basically, what, what he's saying is sometimes you only get three three initials on the um, postcode at the beginning because it's to do with their IT system. That might be one reason. White man in a van said, "Read the postcode thing. You can use the map to see the approximate locations. It all calculates the approximate times get collected and get to delivery." Um, this is a really useful tool for locations that say like Nottingham, but really mean Grantham. Um, yes, now I, I presume everybody knew this because when you, the first thing I always do when a job comes in is I'll click view on map. Or when I see a job posted, view on map. Because that will tell me um, how far I am away from it and how far the job is and which job, direction the job is going and all that kind of stuff. But being the world's worst courier driver and not actually knowing whether. Um, uh, Ponty, Ponty something was actually in the middle of the country or Wales. Um, you go like, oh, so actually no, it's not, it's not what I thought it was. Um, and if you do the thing and you go like that and you push it out, it can give you a much more precise location of where you're going to. Also, when things come in where it says it's from Dagenham or it's from Basildon, like that, is it from Basildon or is it from um, Barking or is it from um, Dartford? Dartford's fine. Barking's fine. Uh, no, Dartford's fine. Um, Basildon's fine. Dagenham's not because it's inside the zone. So I need to know these things. So that's how I go about doing it. Alternatively, I'll ring them up and I'll go, look, it's, it's, as long as it's night inside, the LEZ, I can do it. And I go, no, it's not, so it's like, no, I'm saying LEZ. Because even now, some shippers still don't know the difference between a ULEZ and an LEZ. They will soon, with a, hopefully, they will now with a van thing. But when it was just lorries, they didn't cotton onto it. But there, yeah, the map thing does help. Um, Valentine, Valentine George V says, um, mostly to do with poaching, I think, especially with all that going on in the market right now. Drive safe, Pete. And Shane Hardy says, be careful out there. It's probably, it's probably like you said, a lot to do with poaching. Um, and user PK says, work for a company who uses a CX and puts the first three digits for the exact reason that you mentioned of someone else poaching. My argument <laughs> always was, whoever you give the job to would end up doing it anyway. Yeah, but that's the person you would do the job to would end up doing it. But that means that anybody else who sees the job ping up won't go, there's a lot of jobs. You know, every, week, there's every, every week on a Friday, there's a job comes out of that postcode. I'm going to see if I can look into that. Admittedly, you would have to be a bit Mar bit Miss Marple to track it down, but um, it could be done. So, Chris Harris says, it was always quicker and easier. All oh, right, he's, this is a guy from Shippers' point of view. He said, it's also quicker and easier if you're posting a load for pricing only to put the start postcode. Not saying everyone does this, but when I post loads, especially through the mobile app, it is easier to only use the first part of the postcode. I am also fair when it comes to the mileage. I actually address, um, if the actual addresses work out to be further or in a zone or whatever, I normally chuck the driver a bit more. Doesn't always happen with me though. I have found out most shippers are fair with this. Well, that's good on you, Chris. Like I say, we're in it together. Talk to each other. We're all human beings. Let's play the game together. We'll get further. Um, Freddie Fletcher Limited. He makes, a, he makes a good point, I didn't know. He said, it's in the CX settings to put, to only put half a postcode up. Even if you put the full postcode on the CX, they only put the first half on the post unless you change this in the CX settings. So a lot of people might be doing it unnecessarily un, 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 um, without realising. They might be typing in the full postcode, pushing post, and then when the job comes up, it might come up with the first three digits. I've got to say, I've never really had any problem with it. I mean, I did have one the other day, um, well, yesterday, in fact. <laughs> Luckily, I'd done the job before. And I got to my final point, the drop-off in there. It's a multi-drop picking up. Around. I say multi-drop, I had to pick up in Letchworth and then Bedford and then Leighton Buzzard, all lovely, all around me, and finally drop off in Hemel, which, again, is brilliant. It's 18 minutes away from the yard. And I got to the place, and I'm looking at Waze, and Waze is sending me five minutes away. And I'm thinking, why is it sending Have I gone the wrong place? And I've got two units, and I've got the wrong unit. And I looked at it, and I went, 
no, no, I'm in the right place. <clears throat> Turned out the postcode they gave me didn't relate to the place. So maybe before I'd driven over there and then come back. Fortunately, this time, because I remembered it, I just drove to where I was going. So this time it paid in my favour. One handy van said, the only problem with the first three digits of the postcode is it could be a massive area, especially down in Dev Devon or Somerset. We have one that is TA4, it's a very big area, and the roads are very little tiny lanes. What about, you know, about six foot wide with about 20 villages? So you kind of want to know where it is then. So in that case, I, mean, I would ring them up and go, it says TA4, where in TA4? Because I could be five minutes away or I could be an hour and a half away. You tell me. Um, user SS, SS4. Um, hi, Pete. Thanks for taking the time. That's all right, mate. Um, however, the, oh, he says, <coughs> again, he says, the question was more about why they can't put the actual town or village in it. I think it might have been him who had done the question. He said, thanks for time for doing the clip. He said, however, the question is more about why they can't put the actual town or village on their initial post. As you quite rightly say, as driver speed is of the essence when quoting on the move, um, and the town or village doesn't really help, the postcode, uh, you know, I presume not having it doesn't really help, the postcode can, can come when the quote is accepted. Keep up the way. Yeah, keep up the way. Again, I don't know. <laughs> I think from our point of view, from a driver's point of view, it would be nice to have a bit more information. Where is it coming from? Is it a distribution centre? Is it a hospital? Is it an airport? Sometimes they do say, normally if it says requires driver ID, I think airport, or must print off, uh, must, must, driver must be able to print off the, this makes me smile this, driver must be able to print off the paperwork before going in. Now, some people I know have printers in their van. What do they think? <laughs> what they used to think, what do they do? They go, oh, tow bar on the back with a portable cabin. I'm driving around with a portable office. Hang on, I'll just get out, get in, kick the computer up. <laughs> I know some people do do it. But, I mean, I also know there are other ways where I've done it before. I've actually had to go to an office around the corner from the load to meet the guy to give me the paperwork to go in. That all takes time and is very painful. So when it says must print off driver, um, I just go, no. I'll do it. No, I'm not doing that. I forget. Um, yeah, but it's, it would be very handy to have it. We don't get to have it. What can I say? So we did the one last week on the, the money-making tip. Was that last week? No, I tell a lie. Um, weight and return was the other one we did this week, wasn't it, really? That was the one where... Um, that's one of them kind of... The ones where are just me driving uh, all start with freelance trucking. So if you just want to watch the ones with me driving, just search freelance trucking. I think there's even a playlist on there that says freelance trucking. You can see all the ones of me just driving. That's if you don't, if you're not interested in hearing anything to do with a career exchange, crack on. Uh, yeah, so that was one I did. That was on the 29th of November. I think CW Logistics this week. Wish my wife happy birthday. I will wish her happy birthday, but it's going to be belated because sometimes I make them and then because it takes time to edit those ones, they don't come up straight away, like you know. Um, but Shane Hardy says on that one, he said, I used to work for the Green Parcel Company and they had my, because oh, that's the thing, I've got this great plan. You know, like when you put the pump truck underneath pallets and you can never quite work out whether it's on, you can work out slowly. I noticed the other day as well, when I was doing that job yesterday while I was tipping in Hamel, that I was putting the pallets off because they're quite light and the pallets are that way. And I'm thinking, oh, what's going on here? And then I realised it's because I hadn't pushed the pump truck through far enough. If you push it all the way through so the wheels are that far away from the end of the wood, it lifts the whole pallet. If you push it so the wheels are that far away from the wood but closest to you, the pallet rocks. So I'm going to start putting markings on my pump truck. But I'll do a video about it, show you how I do it. You know, sort of, uh, just make logical sense. So Shane Hardy says, I work for the Big Green Parcel Company and they have markings on their pump trucks. It was a good idea until you until you get an already dodgy pallet. I suppose, you know. <laughs> yeah, you, we can't odds all circumstances, but if it helps most of the time, great. And Rock God says, I use a black marker pen on my pump truck, so it's ripping the blocks off the pallet. Well, I've got them big, thick black mark Pentel marker pens. It's about a fiver. I'm going to try and get it all right. We'll do a video. We'll do a video on how it works, but cool. Uh, yeah, so anyway, last week... Um, the money-making tip, which is the one where I turn around and said, don't tell them your weight. And I still find, I still find it hard because I just want to go, yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm too, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got to get out of this habit, you know. And my, my wife always said, say yes instead of no. I'm now starting to go, it's about time I said no instead of yes. Um, so Hong Kong Fui 2053 says, you give them 10 minutes, that's 10 minutes for them to find a cheaper quote that comes in. And he's right. 
because if they turn around and say, give me 10 minutes while I just get back to the ship, and while they're trying to get an email, and they look at their screen and a job pings up and it's 50 quid cheaper than you, what are they going to do? Are they going to go, oh, no, I really said to that guy, or are they just going to go, oh, I'll just accept that one? Or when the guy turns around and says, yeah, we'll take it, I'll accept that one, and just never ring the other bloke back. You could ring him back and say, sorry, it's not happening. But then you've got to, A, lie to the person you're speaking before, and B, put yourself in a position of potential confrontation, which you don't need to do. The guys might ring him. So why are we helping you out this way? Oh. Roadrunner says, great advice. If someone says, I'll call you back once I've checked, I always advise them that I may have taken a booking by then, even if someone I've worked for before. Most shippers will know how things work anyway, but some shippers either don't realise, don't appreciate, or are just plain arrogant enough to think they will sit around waiting for them to make a decision. And domain name guy says, no, oh, this is on electric vans. He said, electric vans are here, because I was saying about the fact that you can get an advantage going into the zone with these kind of things. Um, E.g. the, the uh, Mercedes E-Sprint, the, the VW Crafter, etc. It won't be long before couriers on the exchange start buying them, and although they may be expensive to buy, um, will give the courier that does an advantage over those that don't finance, that don't finance as they can bid less and go into the zones at no cost, which makes me think a person could rent an electric van as rent as possible. The three things I've got against electric vans, which some I think some guy did actually comment underneath, I'm sorry I didn't see it, it's enough to just get the ones, you know. Um, a, they're incredibly expensive. I think they're about 50 grand to buy. B, they haven't got much for a range. So unless you're just doing local drops like I did yesterday, you know, pick up in, in pick up 10 miles away and go bit, 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 and then go home. If someone turns around and says, I've got a job to Newcastle, forget it. Um, and C, with the price of electric going up, I don't know even if they're much cheaper than the diesel. So you, the, the price that you're, you know, if it's costing, and then they're going, oh, well, you're going to have to pay road tax on your electric vehicles now because there's too many of them. And it's starting to become like, well, I'll stick with the diesel, thanks, and just pay the charges until the charges go up. Keep squeezing us, don't they? Interest rates went up another quarter, a half a percent. It's going to be fun in the new year. Right, trucks. All right, Charles Harris says, I'm related to this video. Okay, he said, I'm, this is Chris from Atlanta. It's based in Bracknell. He said, due to family reasons, I've had to move to Trowbridge near Bath. I recently have two vans, a short wheelbase feed tow and a sprinter loop with a tail, uh, and a tail lift. I found that this worked around the Bracknell areas, um, but I can see on the CX farm or seven and a half jobs in the area. I'm looking to move up to HGVs. I have a class two and I'm looking at my options. O license, upgrading, HX, etc. What are your thoughts on 12 ton vehicles? I have heard that seven and a half tons are only really a thing in the UK due to our road network signage and grandfather rights on our licenses. With a 12 ton though, surely you could do seven and a half ton and some 18 ton jobs. You think it's worth doing? Thanks, by the way. Right, Chris, I'll do you a video on that one, but I'm going to be honest with you. Why would you bother? If you can, uh, 12 tons, uh, there are far more 18 tons of, I presume you're going to get, if you're going to get a second ammo, there are far more 18 tons available. They're cheaper to buy. Uh, you can do 18 ton. You know, like when I was in a loot, and a loot was an ideal van because I could do loot and jobs, but I would also bid on extra long wheelbase jobs, long wheelbase jobs, or even a small van job if it was going a distance. Um, in an 18 tonne, I bet on 12 tonne jobs and seven and a half tonne jobs. If you get a 12 tonne, you know what's gonna happen. You're gonna go distance, you're gonna, you're gonna see a load coming out from two minutes around the corner to your front door, and it needs an 18 tonne. It's gonna be, um, I don't know, eight tonnes worth of gear. And you go, if only I'd do a different vehicle, I'd have that job. So in my opinion, why would you bother? I know my mate uh, Giuseppe runs 12 tons. I might actually, before I do the video, ask him why. I'm going to see him today. I've got two, I've got so much to do. I've got two lorries coming up the yard this morning. I've got one that's got a pre MOT check, and I've got one on an emissions light problem. So I've got to get the guy from DAS out to do that, and I've got to read the cards. I'm starting to ask myself, why am I doing this? <laughs> why didn't I just do what everybody else does and just stick the one van on my own? But, um, yeah. I keep saying that if we keep going sooner or later, I'll be, you know, I'll just be the fifth wheel and I'll just be in the office and all that kind of stuff. I ain't happened yet, it's cold out there. <laughs> I don't really, in fairness, I don't mind, I'm happy driving a truck. So, right, miscellaneous. This week we've got a few of these. 
Leech Leech 001 says, uh, or just Le Leechy says, um, thanks for the mention. That's right, mate. Uh, how long to, for how long do you wait in an area before moving to a place? It, I also took a job from Slough on Friday afternoon at 3 p.m. going to Andover because yeah, I've done that one before. Unfortunately, I got caught in all the traffic on the M25. I didn't arrive in Andover until half six. The whole place was closed and a security barrier at the entrance. The shipper told me to leave it by the barrier, take photos. I didn't get home till 9 p.m. Just hoping I'll get paid for it. If you took a photo and you did everything that you did, then there's no reason why they can't turn around and go, you did it wrong. You did. It. If you pick it up when they tell you to pick it up and you drive there directly and you get there as soon as possible, and if you get stuck in traffic, ring them. Go, look, I'm stuck in traffic. I ain't going to be there till half six. Do you want me to keep going or do you want me to take it back and re-deliver it another day? And if I re-deliver it another day, there's going to be an extra cost, obviously. Um, you did everything right. I have also done a video for you, which is going out Tuesday. I don't think I mentioned your name because I didn't clock who it was. I'm so sorry, but saying how I work it, how far I stay in areas before I move out. So that's coming out Tuesday. And then there's a winter wonderland coming out, <laughs> which I've got to edit this weekend. <laughs> Like, I haven't got enough to do in my life, my work, my son, I ain't Jewish, I'm not Jewish. I have a no, I have no religion whatsoever. I actually say that I'm an atheist. I would be an agnostic, but I actually believe that God hates agnostics more than atheists. I decided to be an atheist. Doesn't like people who can't make their mind up. Um, Castillo Freight says, Hey Pete, uh, great video as always. Uh, oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> the self praise is no praise at all. I just read it out. Um, he said, I've seen a few videos where you talked about quoting also prices, different sizes of vans. I tried to look also on different website. It looks like others are saying it would be fair depending where you are uh, and where you're going. A long wheelbase should be around 120 to 140 a mile, right? Even more, I just started on the CX and quote around 10 to 15. All right, 120 to 140 is probably about right. Now, I haven't run in a van now for about three years, so I'm not really the guy to ask on this. There are plenty of other people out there doing videos about running in vans. You've got Neptune Curry, you've got a van on the run. There's loads of you guys out there doing it. Check out one of those blokes. I think that's about right. Um, I would say probably closer to, the, but the thing is, if you're, I would say if you're quoting the 120, you're going to win far more jobs than you are if you're going to win a 140. When you're in the, in the area, see where you are, have a look around, see when it needs to be picked up, see how many vans are around you, and then you work out the price. Sometimes it's best to ring them, go in with a high price, and try and negotiate your way down if you have to. But these things will come in time. He says, um, right, even more, I just started on the CX and quoted around 10 to 15 jobs in two days or so. All were cancelled very, very quickly. I started at 125 last, no, you can't, you mean cancelled or sold? There's a big difference. 125, last few I went in at 115 to 110 a mile and the same result. Do you think the reason for me being a new company, because I haven't got any reviews yet, it's so frustrating, I know 10 to 15 quotes, not many, it just seems that people will look at the quote and, and see if you're new, no, no. Don't worry too much about the new thing. We've done a video on this about the three things that get you jobs on CX Marriott. The one thing I will say, and it can be very frustrating when you start, is what I would do is, it's like, to me, it's a bit like a canal lock. If you're quoting 120 and you're not winning, go down to 110. If you're quoting 120 and you're not winning, go down to a pound. When you eventually get to a point, and you've got to know your own expenses in here, but just when you get started, I'm not saying do this forever, just when you get started, because it can be incredibly demoralised. And if you keep quoting jobs and you don't win anything, you're sitting at home and the wife's looking at you going, you said you're going to do this and we've got bills coming in. You'll find a price. And then when you get to the point where you're winning every job, start clocking it back up again. Until you get to the point where you're winning. For me, it was, I like to win two out of three. Some people out there are happy to win one in five, but win one in five for big money. You go your way. Everyone does it their way. I don't think there's anything wrong with your pricing. Sometimes it's just bad luck. Sometimes it can be down to how many vans there are in the area. There are other videos like how to win jobs. You can speak to shippers. You can actually ring. I always say ring them, try and talk to them, tell them you're new. I'm new and I'm keen and I want to get on. I haven't got any feedback. I want to do a very good job, so you'll give me good feedback and I'm going to give you a special price just to get you the jump start to get started. Um, also, bear in mind, my friend, this is probably, and I hate the I'm just going to tell you like it is. You know, I'm going to do you the courtesy of being blunt. This is possibly the worst time of year to start because you've got the week before Christmas, which is going to be quiet. 
because everything's shutting down. Then you've got over Christmas, which is going to be quiet because everything's shut. And then you've got January and February, where it starts to wind itself up slowly. Uh, it's going to be slow. So with that in mind, competition is going to be more fierce and people are going to be quoting lower. I'm not saying you've got to do you, you've got to do your prices, but this is going to be the hardest time. This is traditionally always the hardest time. It also, the few weeks that we've just had previously, are traditionally the busiest time. Uh, I will say on Thursday there was a lot of jobs on, but it hasn't had the real whoosh, the November, December whoosh that it has in the past. I mean, there was a time back before the pandemic where you could see two to 250 jobs on a Friday. That hasn't happened. So, but it is what it is, guys. I wish you all the best of luck. Cheers, Drive. Oh, yeah, on the boots thing. He said, I've had buckler boots for years. Brilliant. I don't wear boots in the truck, so I leave them on the step and slip them on. Yeah, that makes some sense. Um, they're quite handy if you've got kind of like rigger boots for that because they just, you know, all, all ones with, yeah, they're the, they're the easiest ones. They're like big. Big, big leather wellies with steel toe caps. I had a pair of them. I've got, I'll be honest, I've got, not that I know what I'm getting for Christmas, but my wife, who is the worst person in the world ever keeps secrets, my God, if you're in my five phone employer, she just turned around to me and she says, um, Joe's, got, Joe's got all our presents. My sister in law has got all the presents for Christmas. She said, yeah, ours, ours are rubbish, but yours is good. I went, is it? Okay, lovely. Yeah, lovely. Yeah, fantastic. She's bought you a bottle of Sicily. I didn't want to know that. Actually, I like surprises. What's the point of wrapping the damn thing up if you're going to tell me what's inside anyway? <laughs> so, well, that's good. I've got a bottle of Sicily. I've, I've run out of that. I've got two smells of wet. Thierry Mugler, amen, in the winter, and Sicily in the summer. Because Thierry Mugler smells like chocolate. And when I was a kid, I kind of think, well, women like chocolate, so they'll like me because I smell like chocolate. Didn't really work. And Sicily, because it smells like nettles. I don't know why I like the smell of nettles. Uh, but yeah, so that's handy because it's going to be a tough year next year. Got a lot of work to do. And um, it means that I've got me some perfume stuck to one side. Also, on the subject of boots, yeah, which, we, which is what we were talking about, I've got a new pair of Timberlands coming off my in-laws. But I asked for them, so that's cool. So as if you don't ask for your present, you end up with a bin or a tennis racket. Um, and, but I probably won't put them into play until... Um, March, April time, because at the moment I've got the super warm Helly Hansons on. Um, I did a video on this. But uh, I'll let you know how they go. I've got the English versions. The American versions, the Boondocks, were just way too expensive, so I bought the English Pros, which were very reasonable. I say reasonable. They're 120 quid, 130 quid. Ain't cheap, is it? But I kind of figure if I'm going to be wearing them all day, every day for the next two years, I'll, I'll certainly, they won't owe me any money by the time they're done. But I'll let you know how they go. So we'll do a video on that. But uh, Buckler Boots, another one out there. Um, Davida says, right, now this is on the Curie Exchange. He says, I'm not paying £2,000 up front for the Curie Exchange. It shouldn't be that much money. I don't know how much they charge. I'm nothing to do with them. But um, other that seems ridiculously expensive. If you just want sole owner, driver, sole trader, not a company. No, I don't want any of the add-ons, thanks very much. It shouldn't be anything like that. And if it is, they're going to start having to lower their prices because there's a cost of living crisis coming out there. People can't afford that kind of stuff. Uh, Gareth B says, I was thinking about going on my own, but after seeing the video and relating comments, doesn't seem worth it, especially if you have to lease or finance. A few mates of mine have got on their own with DPD and are doing really well. I'm currently subbing, subbing to them and getting £500 a day for Christmas time. I know some of the foreign nationals do it regular and get £350 a day with their own vans. Um, why? Uh, presumably, if you're getting £500 a day, but you're leasing their van, they must be taking the money off you for the van and the insurance and all that kind of stuff. But why they would pay more money for you than someone who's got their own van, I don't know. All I will say, and I've said all the way along, um, you've got to do you. You've got to do what's best for you. Um, and if you're getting good money from DPD, stick with DPD. Why would you change? Why would you take a risk if you think, you know, well, I might go on the exchange, I fancy it, and then realise that you've, you've had a horror show, particularly at this time. This is the worst time to join. If you're, if you're thinking, if you're thinking, it's the new year and a new me and I'm going to dump this job that I hate, make preparations to dump this job you hate and dump it at the end of February or the beginning or, or mid-March. If you dump it now, you're going to be out there and you're going to be crying. Because this is the worst time to join. But whatever you do, uh, Gareth B, hope it works for you, mate. You know, uh, David Park says, hey, Pete, he's enjoying the shows. Um, the ex oh, yeah, the expression, keep it, keep her lit. 
I've never heard this before. It means keep her going with full confidence. Very much country expression. I like that, David. I will try to put that into my everyday thing, keep her lit. But I probably won't. I always wanted to try and bring in Shiny after watching that thing on TV. I can't remember what it's called now. The one with Space Cowboys in. It's got Nathan Fillion in. Who was, I like him. I'm going off on a tangent. Um, <coughs> but um, Firefly. It was good. Uh, and they always use Shiny. Have things. Shiny. And I always thought, I like Shiny. I'm going to try and incorporate that in my everyday life. Totally fell. Um, yeah, but I like that. So at least I know what it, what it means now. Um, Daniel at BT Transport says, he says, um, oh, they just over, he said, they, they, were the, they said, they overtook me on the motorway. He said about it last week. Overtook you on the motorway. He said, I noticed from the badly pa painted paddock ways. Well, I did one on paint your wagon, didn't I, really? Which was, um, oh, it, it is an utter failure. <laughs> if you fancy a laugh, paint your wagon, I'll do your link. It's a good video. <laughs> um... Yeah, now my truck, the idea was I was supposed to paint paddock ways out so that it would more it would just look like a plain truck. Now it, I might as well have put a photo of myself all down the side of it. It's ridiculous, but hey, what are you gonna do? The curtains work, they keep the they keep the gear dry, that was what they're there for. So and Steve Campbell on the Steve Campbell week, because he he says I'm not allowed in Australia for some reason that confuses me, as we used to be sent to Australia as punishment. Instead I'm being sent to Coventry tomorrow. Ah, it's it's nearer to get home. And it's nearly Christmas, isn't it, really? So, so in conclusion this week, we have Jane Rawlings. He says, that jumper makes you look like um, a slimming club before and after photo. This jumper here was lovingly, lit, was lovingly knitted by my wife. I sewed on a Stone Island label, which I got off the market years ago when I bought a Schneid jumper. Um, yeah, I like it. <laughs> sewed with love. It's sort of, it's a bit of a baggy, floppy thing, but it keeps me warm. And finally, Teddy, Teddy Gas says, don't dance. And I'm like, Teddy, there's hopefully going to be lots of dancing in the new year. Hopefully, we're going to work hard, we're going to smash it, we're going to take those, there'll be videos. I'll show you my fantastic dancing. Right, sort of. Have you ever seen me dancing? Really dancing. Actually, it is. I like dancing, and it's quite a shocker. You know that bloke out of Four Weds and a Few and Simon Cowell? Have you ever seen him on a dance floor? That's me. <laughs> That's it, guys. One more week left to go. So there probably will be a video next week because I tend to record them ahead of time. And if it is quiet, I'll get, um, I'll get time to do it. So there'll be the Christmas Eve special, which won't be special in any way whatsoever. I might put a Santa hat on. Um, and then that's just done. So I hope you're out there. I hope that the ice is going to, I think it's going to get warmer next week as well. So the rain will probably wash away the ice and snow, which will make it more miserable. They said there'd be snow at Christmas, but instead it just kept on raining. My favourite Christmas song, that. Don't forget also your, oh, that's coming up in the video, the four Christmas songs. You need to know your four Christmas songs categories. It's important. Um, yeah. One week left to go. Let's, let's make it count. Let's get out there, take care, take money.